I am back with a video that I've been meaning to do for a long, long time, uh, something very near and dear to my heart. Uh, funny that I say heart because heart is probably like one of the main reasons why I deal with this in the first place, but um, that is going to be anxiety, panic disorder, depersonalization, and derealization. So this video is going to be essentially my story on what I've gone through, uh, what I've dealt with, what I've experienced, my journey, uh, where I'm at now, and uh, I, I hope that there's going to be some sort of takeaway from this for people who are just learn learning about it or new to it or uh, are in it and haven't defeated it or you know just looking for some sort of light at the end of the tunnel or just at least some sort of understanding of, of what's happening to them or what they're going through if they just have no idea what is happening to them. So uh, this is going to be a very long-winded video. Um, I have a lot to go through. I decided because of the serious nature of the video that I didn't want to be like shoveling piles of big ass, you know, bites of food in my mouth. So we're just going to snack on one of my favorite snacks ever in the world, which is beef jerky. Got the Jack Link's teriyaki flavor. Teriyaki is a beautiful beef jerky flavor. And then just for shits and gigs, uh, I got like one of these like sticks of the original because I didn't want to get a whole nother pack. It's kind of thicker. I just want to see like what the diff is between the two. So I'm gonna have some BJ, some beef jerk, uh, and talk about, yeah, anxiety, panic disorder, um, just that whole spectrum of things. So I'm gonna crack these, and then I'll get to talking about the whole situation. And I'm putting these on the table, so don't judge me. All right, so I've been gone uh, off the channel now for about maybe three weeks or so, since the start of January, essentially, since the new year. And the reason being is, and that's why this video feels so relevant to me right now, is that my roommate is unfortunately experiencing a bout, a very bad bout of anxiety and panic disorder, symptoms and feelings and all that. Now, when you have this disease or whatever it is, this mental issue. When you have it bad enough, it becomes debilitating. Especially when you have extreme panic. Everyday things are terrifying. You are constantly in your head about basically like where and when you're going to die. All irrational fears. But just leaving the house to even go to work, you know, be in a cab, be in, you know, public somewhere, whatever, it all creates these intense sensations in your body that seem very real. I mean, they are real up to a degree because that's how strong your mind is. That's why that when they say, like, your mind can be used to create your life and manifest things, that power of that is true because alternatively, when you think super negative thoughts, uh, dwelling around health and stuff like that, your thoughts can create symptoms in your body, such as sweating palms, racing heart, uh, dizziness, brain fog, uh, fatigue, twitching, all the classic symptoms of essentially I'm going to die anxiety. Now. I've been trying to respect the space by not being intrusive in it and letting my roommate deal with what they have to deal with. You know, in good time and just not be asking too much of them at this time, at this moment. So that's why I've been away from the channel is that I've been trying to allow them their time to recover and heal because Ultimately, their mental health is more important than me eating food on camera. Though I know these videos do go to serve to help thousands of people. So, I mean, that's a bit of a catch-22 right there, but it is what it is. It's what I got to do. So, now that that's explained and out of the way, my story goes like this. I didn't know it then. But now that I'm older now and I've experienced all this, my first panic attack when I was 11. And I remember it 
clear as day. Uh, I was watching like a 90s flick with my uh, my mom and my sisters in my mom's apartment. And I just remember, you know, it was like 8.30 at night, 9 o'clock, it was dark out. I remember having this intense feeling of like, I can't breathe, like I can't get a deep breath. I could just get shallow breaths, but I couldn't get a deep breath to where it felt like I was actually breathing. My chest was getting tight and thinking of I couldn't get a breath led me into a full freak out. So I'm freaking out to my mom, like I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I gotta go to the hospital. And my mom doesn't play around with that shit either, so she's like on it. We're in the whip, get to the hospital. They run tests. Everything's fine. By the time I'm at the hospital, I'm fine. Like I'm calm, nothing's wrong. So from that age on though, I basically became hyper conscious of breathing. And breathing is just a normal body um, function that you shouldn't really notice. Like when you're distracted and going about your day, you're not really ever conscious of your breathing unless you're having some sort of issue or you're like, you know, exercising or whatever you've run or whatever it is like. But since that day, and I'm doing it right now, I can already feel myself doing it. Um, I basically developed this mind fuck of like, a lot of times like, I have full control over it now because like I just, it's what I do now. But I find myself having to take these deep breaths to get what I feel like is a full breath. Otherwise, sometimes I feel like these little shallow breaths aren't like real breaths and like if I don't get one I start to panic if I don't get one of those big ones I start to panic so that was my first essential like bodily mind fuck was the breathing fast forward a bunch of years I don't have any issues actually like uh, uh, like through my teens and stuff da 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 I got into like smoking weed and eventually like drinking and stuff like that. And then my major event that has set everything in the motion for the past, I don't know, maybe decade or so was in the summertime when I was like 19 or so. And uh, my parents at this age would leave us in the city to stay at like the house in the city because we had a cottage in the summer or camp or whatever you want to call it. And my parents would go and live out there for the summer because they didn't want to be in town. But we didn't want to go live out there for the summer. We wanted to stay in town. No parents, party on Fahia. So it was me and my two stepbrothers living at the house. We have friends over, we're day drinking, getting into some other stuff. And uh, eventually like the night would kind of come to a close at, you know, I don't know, one o'clock or whatever, because we've been drinking all day and partying all day in the sun and shit. And I went up to my room, and to close the night out, I thought, I'll just smoke a couple hits off, like, this little bong that I had. Like, just a little, like, one-hitter bong. So, hit the bong. The mix of everything that I was on with the weed reacted absolutely terribly. And within five minutes or so, I was having what I thought was a heart attack. My heart was beating so hard and so fast. I was certain that this was my day, like I was done. So I run downstairs to my stepbrother, he's in bed reading. 
I'm like, yo, 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 check my heart, check my heart. This is not normal. Like, what's going on? He feels it. He's like, yeah, that's pretty crazy, man. But try to just chill out. Like, try to, you know, chill. Alan's like, ain't no chilling for me right now, but okay. See what I can do. So there's like a nice, cool summer breeze. I'm like, let me go lay out on the lawn, hit a starfish, get some breeze, bring it down a notch, bring it down to level, see if I can just like, you know? So I do that. It's helping a bit, but not really. So this heart episode, panic attack, whatever, would ensue for the next like bunch of hours, pretty much all night really, till, till the morning, till like 6 a.m. or whatever. Because, like, I just, for the, the duration of, you know, things being in my system and being high and all that stuff. So now, just like the breathing thing, that event threw me into a hyper-conscious mindfuck awareness of my heart. Of, like, oh, that's a thing that can, like, stop working and I will die. It's like that important to my survival. So now I'm hyper-conscious and aware of my heart. And not only that, now I think there's something wrong with my heart. So here's where the hypochondria comes into the whole panic disorder and anxiety and everything else like that. Generally, most people's anxiety, when you have debilitating, like crippling, anxiety a lot of it is revolves around a base fear and that base fear is usually death or health something that's wrong with you or wrong inside of you that you like can't control in the moment it's really a lot to do with control and death and fear of lack of control is usually the root cause of these issues so now I'm just, from this moment on, my whole world is like shattered because now the only thing I can do ever is obsess about my internal functions of my body. So now I can't get any sleep at night because what happened was I'm so obsessed with my heart that I somehow figured out how to tap into the beat of my heart at any moment like I can I can still do it to this day I still do it to this day but it doesn't bother me like you like it used to so at any moment I can just like stop and like kind of focus in and I can literally like tune into my heart and hear every beat like I can almost hear like the electricity pulsing through it to be honest it's that crazy and uh, so anyways in my early days, I'm constantly obsessing over my heart and I'm constantly, now that's basically creating my thoughts of there's something wrong, I'm dying, da, da, da. So now I'm having these crazy panic attacks, like these random just freak outs for no reason. So my mom's all concerned, we go to hospital and get checked out, they run EKGs or ECGs, all that stuff, they check everything. It's like, man, you're young, you're fine, there's nothing wrong, it's all in your noodle. And like, I'm not buying that shit, right? So, excuse me. I just continue in this like crazy suffering for like a while. Eventually, I got so bad with the shit that I really couldn't get any sleep. And that was driving me crazy. That was making it even worse. Because when you're overtired, that right there lends to the feeling of a panic attack even more. You start to become woozy and dizzy and like brain fog and let you can't, you're just not functioning right. And then that lends to a panic attack. It's a vicious cycle. It's so bad. So I can't get any sleep. So I decide, I'm like, okay, back when I was younger, what used to help me sleep? And I was like, somebody reading to me. In like a soft tone aka my grandma she was sick at it so 
<clears throat> See, here's my deep breaths that I always have to take. You can hear them right now. This is as real as it gets. So, sometimes I just have to take a deep breath like that because I feel like I'm not getting one. Also, I'm like hunched in this chair, so that's probably compressing my diaphragm. So neither here nor there. But I decided to go on YouTube because I'm like, there must be something like that on YouTube. Like, it has to be. It's the internet. Like, there's no way somebody didn't upload like some sort of like reading softly or whatever so i do find like two or three of these whispers and they each have like a few videos so i find these whispers right from the start i'm talking like 2008 shit and i get right into them and they're saving my life like i'm actually able to fall asleep now because i have this thing that's just distracting enough to like keep me from concentrating on my heart because that's what would happen when I was in bed at night I would get so concentrated on my heart that the, the thumping of my heart would keep me awake and keep me sort of in a panic attack mostly through the night and uh, I, I really at one point I could feel my heart like beating through my rib cage like hitting the mattress at one point like my temple beating on the pillowcase I could hear all that and it just was completely distracting and fueled the panic so I was getting no sleep, found ASMR, start using it. It's helping me out, but I'm not cured yet at all. I'm even on it, like day to day, like me being at work and stuff, I'm like falling asleep on the job. I'm like not feeling good at the job. Like I'm feeling like I'm going crazy. It's not good. So I decide somewhere along the way that I'm going to move to Toronto for sound engineering school because when I was at, in my hometown, I went to college for the business marketing. I hated it. I just didn't know what I was doing with my life. I just was working this job with my buddy. And then I got a DUI. And I lived in a city where you needed a license and a car in order to live. Our transit system was trash. It's just not possible to live there without driving. And there was nothing there for me anyways. I just didn't want to do anything there. So I was like, you know what, screw it. It's, this seems like universal like intervention, like just do it, just move to Toronto, go to sound engineering school, you know, go do music because that's what you really want to do. And you know, hopefully everything will be better. So I moved to Toronto. Flying on the plane was a nightmare with anxiety. Getting to Toronto was, was like, you know, I, I was just a ball of stress for a long, long time. Anyways, I get to school, I get start going, like, it starts getting better. Like, I'm starting to have fun again. Like, it's like a fresh start. Uh, I'm still tripping about my internals. I'm still, like, have, I'm having, like, my hypochondria, which is fueling anxiety and stuff. But it's not as bad. Really not as bad. So... I would go to like I went to school for like t like the two years or whatever. Eventually, I would, my boys like my that did music moved uh, to Toronto as well, and we all moved in together. And I mean, during that time, I dealt with it not terribly. Like there was like a nice, good chunk of years where it was like really not that bad. I think it was just because I was like distracted. I was living with my homies. Like everything was fun you know, all that stuff. So I kind of had a few good years. And this is what's weird about anxiety and, and stuff is there's peaks and valleys, ebbs and flows. And sometimes it just comes back and kicks you in the ass for no good reason. But that's because really the reason is you haven't defeated the source of it. And the source of it is knowing, um, you know, what's causing it and how to realize that it's not really real. But we'll get to that. So... Eventually, that household of the boys that I was living with, would we split up. And I got a place with one of the guys that lived there. We got our own place together, him and I. And once again, not too bad for a little while. Here comes the next graduation in one of the more fucked up things or periods of anxiety and panic that I've dealt with. There's a whole new development, and I don't know why or where it came from, but it came, and it was terrible. Now, deep breath. What started happening 
was I was getting sleep panic attacks. So these are especially terrifying because a, they, you can't control them or you can't feel them coming on because you're sleeping and you wake up out of dead sleep you jump out of bed and your heart these are the worst that I've ever had for panic attacks they were reminiscent of that first night with, the, with when I'm drinking and smoking weed and the drugs and shit but not these were worse jump out of bed my heart is like a cartoon, like just like Looney Tunes shit. How they draw it, like coming out of the chest, that's what it feels like. Hyperventilating, shaking, just shaking, terrified. Didn't have a bad dream, didn't have a night terror, nothing. Just body went into fuck you mode for no good reason in my sleep. So I started having these sleep panic attacks Waking up, running down the hallway, butt-ass naked, past my roommate's room, looking out the window, hoping for an ambulance to be there. Like, so delirious. Just because you wake up out of sleep and you're like, what the fuck? This is so stupid. Like, you don't even know what's going on. So, eventually I learned this technique where I would just go on all fours and do my breathing. So, I started learning about breath work. Hugely helpful. Um, you just slow your breathing down and then that slows your heart rate down and everything. And you kind of come down from your, your trip out. So four in, four out. You want to hold them though. You know, one, two, three, four in. One, two, three, four out. And you just repeat that until everything starts to calm down, calm down. And like the shakes and the jitters go away. And when you finally calm down from a panic attack, there's no better feeling in the world. I promise you. It's just like the most relieving feeling ever. You're just like, okay, I didn't die. I'm still here. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I had those, and those would turn into me being afraid to sleep. So now I had this thing where when I was falling asleep, I like subconsciously developed this thing where my body would jolt me back awake as soon as I was drifting off because I was terrified of having a panic attack in my sleep. Once again, vicious cycle. So now I'm getting no sleep. When I am falling asleep, I'm getting the sleep ta attacks. Shit's bad, shit's brutal. Eventually, somehow, for whatever reason, they stopped. I got over it. And I was pretty much back to normal. You know, normal. So again, I'm on a pretty good roll. I'm on a pretty good run. Everything's going smooth. Like all is well for the most part. And then I've mentioned this in a, in a video or a couple of videos before is like last year, like around the time of November, October, November, December kind of thing. I dealt with a whole new level of this mental disease or whatever it is. And that, my friends, is called depersonalization, derealization, and for me, the like the sunken place. And the sunken place is real as fuck. It's like too real. It's but then again it doesn't feel real at all. So it's contradictory. But here's how I'll explain it. Um, I started once again having just heart-based fear and, you know, general panic and anxiety. So that came on and I was just, you know, trying to get through. I'm like, okay, this is, this is standard. I've been through this. I'll be fine. Blah, blah, blah. That said, my ex-girlfriend it was her birthday in November and she wanted to go on like a tropical vacay. And, uh, you know, it's all she really wanted to do. We've never gone on a vacation like that together. She just loves sand and sun. She was like, I, I hate the winter. I'm feeling depressed. Like, please, can we just do this for my birthday? Blah, blah, blah. So 
I scrape up my money together. Like I'm going on basically when I get back, I got no dough, like just shit's tight. So, and I'm already like having this like shitty time with, with the panic and the anxiety. So instead of going to a third world country feeling like fucked up, I decide I'm going to go to a walk-in clinic and just get checked out just to make sure everything's fine. And just to reaffirm that everything's in my head and I'm just not, you know, I'm actually fine. Cause that's usually what I, what I tell myself and, and it's true. I am. So I go to this walk-in clinic and I go in and I'm telling her what's going on and they're like, okay, well, we'll run like a heart monitor test on you and see what's going on. And if that's what your, your fear is and you think is wrong with you at all, then we should check it out. So run the test, the test comes back. Your, your heart is supposed to be at 60 beats per minute to anywhere between that and like 90 or 100 resting, but optimally 60 to 80. If it's over 100, that's not good. If it's under 60, it's not good, depending. But anyways, mine comes back at a resting rate of 55 beats per minute. Now, sometimes that can indicate that you're very healthy, that you're like an athlete or just in really good shape because your body needs to needs less um, blood, oxygen, and everything because you 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 burn more optimally or whatever, right? <clears throat> so she goes to me because you know I'm not in like sick shape, right? Like I I've I've smoked in my life. I've I'm drinking, you know, I haven't stopped drinking. Like I drink recreationally, um, you know, young, dumb and having fun essentially. And I'm not in the best shape. Like I eat on camera on YouTube, like, come on. So she's like, okay, well, 55 beats per minute is of some concern because that can basically be a thing called bradycardia or bradycardia, where it's indicative that like maybe one of your valves isn't operating at its full, you know, potential or whatever. But she's like, there's no actual indication that anything's wrong, truthfully. But she's like, I do want to run this other test uh, just to see. And I was like, cool, let's do it. And I'm like, when can we know the results? And I was leaving on this trip in like two, three days. And uh, she's like, oh, yeah, I won't, we won't have results on that for like, you know, a week, two weeks. Not, not till you're back. And so now I'm like, oh, great. So I'm going to fly on this plane to this third world country with like no insurance, all this shit. And now you've given me this thing where now I'm Googling this shit about bradycardia and like, th like I'm already a heart hypochondriac as it is already suffering from anxiety and shit from it. And now you're going to tell me this. And now I've, I already have this p vacation paid for. Great. This is awesome. So I go on this vacation and from beginning to end, I am a fucking wreck. I am a nervous wreck. I'm so worried about like my heart and shit, everything. I, I'm just completely just not good. This vacation was terrible and I ruined it. I know I did. And it was like her birthday. And I tried my best to be like present and like try to, you know, like be like the fun loving guy that I usually am that who could just drink and stuff. But the thing is when you're dealing with panic and anxiety, drinking is great while you're drinking, but when you stop drinking and you're hungover and you're in that state, it is an absolute nightmare because drinking and hangovers once again, add to the feelings of what panic attacks feel like. So it just further fuels that fire and uh, it just makes everything worse, magnifies by t 20. So there were nights where we did drink and then my next days were terrible. So I just start drinking again to try to deal with it, which isn't good for you, but it's really the only thing I could do while I was away on that vacation. I was just like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to freak out and die if I don't like have something to calm me down. So <clears throat> anyways, we, uh, have a really stressful vacation to be honest together it was not didn't feel like a vacation at all uh yeah i was a wreck and um 
that I wrote right there is about the time where I found myself in the, or I got pushed into the sunken place or what's called depersonalization and derealization. And so what that is, is when it's essentially when you're having such intense traumatic thoughts, like two, four, seven, and your body's in a constant state, like you're in a constant state of freak out, your body basically has this defense mechanism built into itself where it decides, okay, buddy, you're like way too neurotic and you're freaking out for no good reason. I'm shoving your awareness, like your consciousness in the back seat. And that's the only way I could describe it is like, I felt like I was in the back seat and I'm taking over from here and we're just going to put you on a little timeout until, uh, until you're ready to come back and, and face this reality that you're actually fucking fine. So I get put in the sunken place by my body and I know this sounds insane, but it's true if you've ever dealt with it, like I feel terrible for you because it sucks and it feels like you're never gonna come back and your life's over, but essentially what I say is when I'm mentally healthy and aware and clear like I am now, I feel like my, my awareness and my consciousness is very forward. Like I am in my eyes, like I am right here. When I was in this state, I felt like I was back here in my head. I felt like I was viewing my life from behind a piece of like foggy, like saran wrap and everything that was me, wasn't me. I felt decoupled from my body. I felt detached. I felt like the little man in the chair up there in like the fifth dimension, like kind of, you know, running the game, like running the, the, the wheels. Um, so I just remember looking out at like my hands and thinking like, like I recognize that that's a hand and it's like, it's my hand, but it's like not my hand. And then I kept like, I would look in the mirror and I would see what I know to be myself, but I just, I would, had no attachment to my identity. I felt completely detached from my identity. I felt so separate from my identity and my body and like who I am and what I am, like my name and everything. I just felt so separate from it from it it's the weirdest feeling you could ever go through and i wish it upon nobody because it's not fun at all it sucks it's terrible i hated it i was in the sunken pl place for probably about two months and like i said i didn't think i was ever going to get, get out of it i thought i was going to be stuck in it forever it's terrifying and fortunately for me i took the initiative to do research on it and I was able to find videos about it and other people who had gone through it and come out on the other side and been like, this is what's happening to you. And once I understood through their explanation of what was happening to me, like I just told you guys, like your body basically telling you like, you're out, I'm in until you can get your shit straight and realize there's nothing wrong with you, then, then you can come back kind of thing. So eventually I found information about it that kind of told me that and then from there I just learned to like let my fears go as much as I could and slowly but surely I came back I also got my test back from the lab saying like your heart is fine <laughs> nothing is wrong with you you're actually optimal like it's all good no worries so that put my mind at ease and then I just realized that every everything that I had been stressed about that I thought was gonna kill me for the past X amount of time, even nine years. Like if I was gonna have a heart problem or a lung problem or any problem or die or freak out and die, it would have happened like a thousand times ago. So I just had this epiphany one day where I was just like, I just told myself, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, stop it. There's nothing wrong with you. If you were going to die from any of these things, it would have happened by now. So I just was like, no more. You're not allowed to freak out about this shit anymore. There's nothing wrong with you. Your body is fine. Just live in the moment. Go do things take that take your mind off of all this other shit. And just be engaged in stuff. So... I'll say that 
that's basically what got me out of it is just me realizing the base factors of why I'm freaking out. And that's because clearly I have like hypochondria around my body parts inside and stuff like that. And I also clearly have like some sort of fear of death. But I told myself one day that I don't have control over that. I don't have control over my heart. It's naturally doing what it's going to do. Uh, I'm going to be taken from this planet when I'm going to be taken from this planet and I can't control it really. Uh, I mean, barring me like actually taking myself out. But if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. And I can't fight that. Like, it's not up to me to decide. So it's like, I just tried to come to terms with and came to come to peace with like the idea that I have no control over my death, really. And when it happens, it's going to happen. And that's it. Like, I can't, I can't do anything about it. And it's inevitable and it will happen one day. So to identify the root of the problem is the first thing. Uh, the second thing is just to realize that it's all irrational and there's nothing really wrong with you when you're having these thoughts. And the third thing for me, which was another major problem, was because I just felt like in my relationship, my girlfriend was very like, smothering in a sense she just wanted my time all the time and I had so many things and have so many things that I need to work on uh, on myself and with like my goals and dreams like I want I need to be creating and there's so many things there's so many things that I have to create still that I'm still like in limbo right now just waiting to create and I'm so excited for the future to do it and I can't wait because I just feel like once I am creating on that level that's just like on a non-stop level on multiple facets of myself I'm going to be so mentally fit, so mentally strong, so mentally like worked out because that's the thing. Like for me, what helps me the most or helped me the most was not even like distractions, but the, the, like work, working on things that are true to me that like this channel, cooking, music, when I'm involved in those things and I'm able to express myself creatively share my opinions, share my thoughts, be authentically who I am, uh, you know, music, everything like that. So many, like that all to me is that that's my medicine. It's my healing medicine. Keeping yourself locked inside of yourself and not expressing yourself exactly who the fuck you need to be, that shit festers and eats at you and it all builds up and it's all going to come out somewhere. And for me, it was coming out in fear, in irrational fear. And it was because when I'm not engaged in the things I want to or need to be doing, then what am I doing? I'm stewing in thoughts that are unproductive. I'm just laying around thinking like what else I could be doing with my time. And instead, I'm just in my head losing my shit about nothing that like, you know, it's not true. So I guess that would be my tip. I know it's been a really crazy long-winded video and I've just been like on a roll, but I hope you're still with me, but that's it. Like those are, those are the three things you gotta do if, this, if you're going through this and you're facing anything that I've mentioned, just know that it's all in your head. It really is, it's all in your head when, when you tell the tell it it's not real fuck off it's not it's not real it's not real it's just your your subconscious brain or whatever it is like overriding your trying to override your power your actual like frontal power it's just you have to tell yourself none of this shit's true because it's not it's not real and like like i said second or first really evolved but second or whatever is identifying the problem like what are you scared of Where's your fear coming from? As soon as you can look that in the face, tell it to fuck off, and that it, it doesn't control you, fear of death, your heart, whatever it might, might be, maybe something a little bit less intense, uh, you gotta look that in the face and, and you gotta just just not fear it anymore, straight up. And then the third thing for me, like I said, just be be in your purpose, be working on yourself, be being proactive, be doing things. Doing things is so, it's just such a reward system. Like when you do things and you get things done and you're proud of something, 
that's that's all channeling and fueling positive energy into your aura or whatever you want to call it your chakras like that's all positive feedback from the output if you output positive you're going to get return positive and your mind is going to be in a whole different wavelength when you're when you're living in that space so instead of dwelling on the negative and tripping out about like how this that and the other and like oh i'm stuck i'm a victim i can't change this and it's just it's a loop cyclical thought when you get caught in the loop that's when you're fucked you gotta break the loop it's the loop that's what it is the loop once the loop gets you and i know what it's like i still have to do my little deep breaths and at this point in my life it's the habit but I'm like okay with it. it. Doesn't freak me out anymore. Sometimes at night I can still feel my heart beating, but I realize that it's not beating weird or anything. It's just the heart beating. It's fine. Like shut up, go to bed. Like sleep time is now. So, anyways, I don't really know how much more I can elaborate on that because um, it's been long already. But I feel like it's necessary, and the story is probably going to be important to a bunch of people. So. Um, yeah, that's my crazy weird story. I know I sound like a psycho. I promise you I'm not. It's just the brain is very, very powerful. That's that's It's the most powerful tool that is on this planet. That's why we are an alpha predator. That's why we run shit around here. And But if you're not careful, it, your brain can run you for the negative, for the worse, not for the better. But if you can get a grip on your thoughts and learn how to channel them positively then you can manifest you can create you can become things that you never thought you could you can get better you cannot exist in that fear-based prison in your head and just break free of that shit and just be outward and positive and yeah that's it so I got for you. Also, the regular beef jerky is better than the stick one. So I'll just end with that maybe. All right? Till the next one. You know what you got to do. You got to eat good. You got to live well. You got to stay true. Cheers. One love.